This notion of instantaneous rate of change is such an important one in calculus that we're going to give it uh, a separate concept, a separate definition, um, which is going to be one of the formative anchors of, of calculus. And this notion is going to be the derivative. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at the definition of the derivative and we're going to see how it carries forward from what we have previously seen about instantaneous rate of change and talking about slope. And we're also going to see a slightly different definition, which is a little bit more useful. And we're going to see how these two definitions are actually saying the same thing. All right, so here's the textbook definition. Uh, it says, let f of x be a function defined in an open interval containing a. All right, so open interval just means uh, what you're used to, um, you know, so like negative one comma one is an open interval because you've got parentheses on both sides um, and it contains a. This just basically means that f is defined at a and f is defined at points near a uh, for some reasonable definition of near. Okay, so given that, um, that definition allows us to make sense of what limit means. The derivative of the function f of x at a, which is denoted, you'll see us using this notation a lot. We're just going to toss a prime at the end of the uh, letter that we're using for the function to talk about the derivative of the function at a is defined by, so f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a divided by x over a. So this is the same notion of instantaneous rate of change that we've been talking about in the past few videos. And you can see that this is just the slope function. This is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Talking about the slope between this point, which is our fixed point at a, and this moving point, which is moving closer and closer to a. OK, so that's the definition of the derivative. So you can see that it's got a ton to do with slope. It's got this instantaneous rate of change connection, provided the limit exists. If the limit doesn't exist, we'll talk about some examples of that in future videos. Um, but if that limit doesn't exist, then there is no derivative at A. And here's an alternative definition. We can also define the derivative of x at a as f prime of a is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. All right, so this looks slightly different, but let's see that it's actually talking about the same concept that we have here, just in slightly different terms. So as I said, we've got this fixed point and we've got a moving point and we want to talk about the slope of that point as the moving point gets closer and closer to the fixed point. We're really doing the same thing here. So here's our moving point. Or I'm sorry, here's our fixed point, f of a. And this time, we want to talk about the moving point not in terms of its x value, but in terms of how far away it is from a. All right, so if h is small and positive, then f of a plus h is the output for an input that's a little bit more than a. If h is small and negative, then a plus h is a little bit less than a. And so this is talking about the difference between the output values as the difference between the fixed point and the moving point approaches zero, which is the same thing as saying as the as the moving point gets closer and closer to the fixed point, it's exactly the same thing as to say as the difference between the two of them approaches zero. <clears throat> so the numerator is saying the same thing and the denominator is talking about the difference between the input value of the fixed point and the input value of the moving point. In this case, uh, they kind of do the arithmetic for us and knock it down to just h. So this would be a plus h minus h if we were using this same definition, but I'm sorry, a plus h minus a, but those a's just cancel out and it leaves us with h in the denominator. So these are two different ways of thinking about the function. Um, one of them is going to, um, if we use this one, uh, like we saw in the last example, we might find ourselves having to do some factoring in order to solve complicated problems. Uh, in this example, 
Uh, we usually don't have factoring to do, or the factoring is very simple, but evaluating f at a plus h may require a little bit of arithmetic. So there are pluses and minuses to using um, the two definitions. Usually this is the one that is going to be the less work between the two of them. For various reasons, we'll see some examples moving forward, uh, and we'll see how there's either no difference between them or when we get particularly complicated, um, this usually turns out to be the one that wins out in the end. At either rate, uh, what I hope you're seeing is that these two definitions are essentially saying the same thing, just in slightly different ways. Um, and that's the definition of the derivative, which is going to be one of the key ideas that we're going to talk about in this calculus course.